All right, let's return and uh, take a quick look at the COVID numbers. Weekly COVID cases in the country have topped 25,000. This is the highest weekly tally in nearly three months and is 45% higher than the previous weekly tally. Over 4,500 cases have been recorded in just the last 24 hours with COVID positivity currently at 1.62%. However, what's heartening is that deaths continue to remain extremely low. Meanwhile, the Maharashtra cabinet held a meeting amidst a huge spike in COVID cases in the States. Uh, remember, the spike in cases in the country is primarily being driven by Maharashtra and Kerala. My colleague Shrishti Sharma is joining us now with a breakdown of the numbers and the increase in cases that we've been seeing. Well, yes, the COVID cases in India seem to be making a comeback as day by day we are seeing the cases rising. If we see the data, then there has been a 65% jump in the past one week. From just 2,745 cases by May end, the number has shot up to 4,518 new coronavirus cases across the nation on June 5th. And that's the highest since March 20. Now, two states have been contributing the most in the jump, wherein Kerala and Maharashtra, these two are said to be accounting are over 60 percent of the India's fresh cases and two kind of variants are coming up with their names where BA4 and BA5 variant of Omicron has been hitting the nation but if we talk about BA4 variant then experts say that this does not does not pose a concern since it's an offshoot of the Omicron variant that was widely spread across the nation so not making that kind of an impact but the state have already started to be on the vigil about the same. Amid the rise in the COVID-19 cases, the centre had sent letters to five states, that is Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. And in the letter, they have advised the states to follow a five-fold strategy, that is test, track, treat, vaccination and also follow the COVID-19 appropriate behaviour. But a state like Maharashtra, once again, the mandate to use public mask in the public places has come in the place and the uh, government is actually concerned because today if we talk about then a state like Maharashtra, the number of cases has uh, gone up the thousand level of the mark. But amidst this, we see that the vaccination count on the daily basis is holding steady and there has been a marginal uptick in the booster shot numbers as well. Well, there's little, uh, uh, you know, surprise there that uh, people will now start remembering their booster shots as the numbers increase. Dr. N.K. Arora, chair of Antagi COVID subcommittee, is joining us on the show this evening. I'm speaking with Dr. Chandrakan Lahedia, epidemiologist, uh, who is also with us on the India development debate. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Bagai, chairman and MD of Nephron Healthcare, also joins us on the show. Welcome to all of you. Dr. Arora, let me begin by just getting your sense of the increase in cases and the pace of increase. I mean, this is a pattern we've seen before, isn't it? Um, is the preparation like that of uh, you know, like we're being ready for a fourth wave? So, thank you very much, Tamanna, for inviting me. So, I would like to, first of all, allay that this is harbinger of a fourth wave. The reason is that every new wave is driven by a new variant. And, uh, in fact, during last three months, the genomic surveillance, as well as Swiss so surveillance has been strengthened and refined to see that we are able to pick up any new variant as well as the quantity of variants because <clears throat> the because of the mild illness testing has gone down because people are not coming forward for testing and fortunately during all these three months we haven't seen anything except three weeks ago we have uh, found BA, uh, uh, BA4 and BA5, which were first described in South Africa. They have spread all over, and now they are in India also. But contact tracing of all these cases have not shown any upsurge of cases. Now, why the current upsurge of cases? Mm. So if you remember, in April, there was an upsurge of cases in Delhi also. And we were having 1,000 plus cases every day at that time. And in NCR also, there were cases. Right. There were small, there were small upsurges in schools also. There were small mm. outbreaks, 40, 50 children getting infected in Noida and some of them. And in fact, looking closely at them, at that time, we found that a lot of these are coming from better off colonies, schools, private schools. And then it has 
subsided. So now it is around 800 or so. Mm -hmm. Now, they, Mumbai also, uh, there has been a report that most of the cases are occurring in high-rise buildings, not okay. in slum areas or poor, poor areas. Third thing is that there is a, a kind of a huge air traffic in and because of the uh, beginning of the summer holidays, you find you, you cannot get a ticket in any of the domestic airlines and even international airlines, it, it, they are all full. So mobility of people, whether it is because of holiday, because of the business. So, so are, are, we, are we becoming lax in testing then, Dr. Arora? No, no, they are not lax in testing. I, if it was lax, then 1.6 would not be there. It, it would be much higher if the number of testing was much less. So every state has been told to have a defined number. So our target is that at least five to six lakh tests are done every day so that we are not picking up, we are not missing out anything. The second thing which is very important and I will share this with the audience that sewage sampling is a very important way. So when we collect sewage, three to five days before the, uh, uh, the upsurge occurs, the virus starts coming up in the virus. It's very interesting. So you get a lag period, I mean, in, uh, a preparatory period for almost a week when you are doing sewage sample. And so, and, but, and as soon as the, uh, the cases start coming down, the concentration of virus in the sewage also goes down. So having said all that, the current uh, wave, whether it is in Maharashtra or uh, Kerala and the other states, it is, I think, linked to several of these factors which are there. One other thing I would like to share with the viewers is mm -hmm. that there has been a lot of concern in the Western countries, USA and Europe, about something called BA 2.12.1. Now, this is another sub-lineage which is being very closely watched. And in India, we had seen the first case right on 27th of November. Now, there is no exponential ex uh, kind of expansion of this particular sublineage. Again, showing that somehow we are able to handle this third wave. The disease is mild. You very rightly said 4,500 cases, nine deaths. And the other thing is most of the cases are mild. 99.4% of the beds in the country are no, so, so, no, so, you know, the thing is, what, what has changed in people's perception with COVID-19, and this is a good thing, people are not scared like they were, uh, say, in the early half of 2020, even in the second wave of 2021, uh, when we were dealing with Delta, what uh, January's third wave has taught us that it will come, uh, it will give you a mild infection in most cases, and it will go. The question is, that are we seeing different variants now or is it more of the same? Let me come to Dr. Laharia on this. Um, is it now absolutely clear in no uncertain terms that we're dealing with more of Omicron and nothing more? And will something like a booster shot give you more protection against it? So what we need to remember that uh, majority of cases in India, as we know through genomic sequencing, are due to Omicron or sublineage now. A majority, 97, 98%, very few Delta cases are coming and Dr. Arora is more aware of genomic sequencing. But what, I want to go back to one of the points that when baseline of COVID-19 cases, daily new COVID-19 cases so low, the only direction cases can go is up. And every rise or every increase in cases in a localized setting, we should not jump to the conclusion that it is the start of new wave. But another point is that two and a half years, nearly two and a half years into the pandemic, we need to remember that at the beginning of pandemic, in the March 2020, uh, emergence of COVID-19 was a public health challenge. But now it is less of public health challenge, more of an individual challenge. And let me explain. Three things have changed in the last two and a half years. One is that in the beginning, everyone was susceptible. Now majority of population has developed natural infection. Second, people are vaccinated, which was not the case earlier. And third, we know the epidemiological pattern that which is the population which is at higher risk. So when we put all of these three together, the vaccination, natural infection, and disease pattern, we know that now infection is not a public health challenge, but it can be a risk to the individual. So our approach cannot be the very same, which was earlier. Now, final part on your question regarding booster, we know that uh, 
two shots of vaccine and also a natural infection provide as good a protection as three shots. And now there are studies that there is some advantage of three shots of vaccines, but uh, there is no advantage of fourth shot. But even if we put that aside, government has already opened the booster shot for a majority or rather entire adult population. So we need not to worry about this thing. If you are high risk, you can get definitely, you should definitely get booster shot. But if you consider your risk higher, irrespective of your uh, health condition, you can get a booster shot. So India is really well prepared in the terms of natural situation, yes. but also in terms of offering no, vaccine. So then the question is, why, why are we seeing an increase in cases? Dr. Bagai, what is the reason why over the last two, three weeks, we've been seeing an increase in cases? If you see people have stopped wearing masks, well, that's been a while. Um, everything has opened up since a while. What is the trigger behind this new increase or boost in the number of cases? Good evening, and good evening to all the panelists and all the viewers. Uh, so going a little bit more in detail, I agree with both my previous speakers. Uh, I think the problem is with the virus. The virus, uh, to begin with, is a new sublineage. It is antigenically distinct from the original Omicron, which was called as BA.1. And the new sublineages are distinct from BA.2. So uh, Dr. Arora had mentioned BA.2.12.1 and BA.4 and BA.5. And these call uh, these are precipitating what we call as different and distinct super antigens. So they evade the immune mechanism not only from natural infection but also with regards to vaccination. So it is called as they dodge the immunity. The point number two is there is enough data now that masks will still protect, and unfortunately, a vast section of uh, the Indian community, vis-a-vis -vis even the medical professionals, are not wearing the masks as regularly as before. The social gatherings are up, the weddings are up, the international travels are up, and there lies the problem. Point number three is with regards to the third vaccine, which I have always said right from the beginning, it should be a part of the primary schedule and not even called a booster. Booster is an annual shot which will look after itself next year onwards. It's extremely important because this gives you the added breadth. So let me explain just 30 seconds. The antibodies which are produced with your third shot, the breadth and potency are very much different in trajectory versus the two shots. So it gives you a distinct advantage. And the, and what we call as the mix and match, what is the heterologous, now with the Cobra Vax allowed, uh, with a subunit uh, receptor binding protein uh, vaccine, it gives you 72 to 91% added protection with regards to AstraZeneca and uh, what we call Covaxin and, and Covishield. So it's extremely important as your third dose Four important points I want to mention at the end of this talk of mine is that we need to protect the vulnerable, which is children, the pregnant ladies, the extremely clinical vulnerables, which is immunocompromised, and the elderly. The message is there should not be panic. There should be preparedness. In spite of the three vaccines, do not forget your masks because Omicron and its sublineages know how to dodge even the vaccine mechanism. Okay. Now, the, the question then uh, here is, Dr. Aroda, do you see the states of Kerala and Maharashtra also following the Delhi pattern? You spoke about the Delhi pattern in your first response, where we saw cases going up to about 1,500 a day, and then they petered out. Uh, are you hopeful that that will be the situation here as well? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you would remember that Delhi government had withdrawn... Uh, uh, essentiality of uh, mask hmm. and then it was reintroduced similarly now you hear in maharashtra and kerala also and other states the central government has asked them to uh, to kind of strictly adhere to corona appropriate behavior you would also remember in march one or two weeks it was less than 1000 cases and then gradually around delhi ncr cases increased to 2000 3000 and uh, the both national and international traffic in Mumbai and and uh, Kerala is much more, both national as well as international. So I think travel is also uh, fueling the whole thing, and it should kind of plateau down or come down in the next three to four weeks time. That's what uh, I feel. And the the good point is that serious disease does not seem to be uh, likely. Having said all this, I would say. COVID is very much here. It's very much here and we need to be very vigilant because it can take any other shape in coming weeks or months. And 
for that the system has to be prepared the community has to be prepared that there can be upsurge so that we should continue to follow corona priority here similarly the system whether it is hospitalization issues whether it is icu also uh, we need to bring uh, back mandatory with... masks uh, because in mumbai and maharashtra right now it's not been mandated it's been recommended it's not been mandated yet do you think we yes. need to go back to mandatory masks yes i think if uh, unless if we really want to come down faster hmm. see uh, there is another dimension we whenever we have these discussion we talk about health issue the economic dimension of this whole illness is also now very very important and we have to move even economics has increased the mobility of people so today if a, a worker gets mild illness then it is not too much of a disruption so for that it is important that the disease and the spread transmission is kept under uh, control and the second is surveillance has to be very meticulous at this time whether it is imported from outside or within india if anything new generates and that is one of the major focus of the program at just a quick uh, take on uh, mandatory masking uh, dr laharia your view on that do you think the masks need to be brought back well what currently in different states are doing is a right approach that this has to be a calibrated decision in some setting there are, is a need for mask mandates but uh, i don't think in the outdoor space there is any need for any mask mandate but indoor space in the setting where cases are rising as mumbai had done mask should be made uh, must mumbai uh, has not uh, made masks must there is there is this bit of confusion since over the weekend but the health minister of the state has come out and clarified that this is a recommendation so yeah the, what mumbai the signs have not started yet it had it, there is no fine on the mask in mumbai but there is no mandation mandate for the outdoor space but what mumbai order has said that masks are must in the indoor space but they are not mandatory and they are making a difference in the must and mandatory but forget about that the key point is that it has to be really calibrated it's not that if cases are rising and if there are high cases it need to be voluntary but if cases rise if there is a high burden then it can be made some regulation there but in majority of other setting in outdoor spaces mask can be voluntary and majority of places mask should continue to remain voluntary but final point is that no matter whether it's a mandatory or voluntary the key focus has to be in raising awareness about the mask wearing and people who are at high risk should voluntarily wear mask and that has to be the approach individual need to adapt that behavior without yes. government telling quick word from you is. quick word from you dr bagai uh, i mean yeah, so mandatory means if you don't find people for not wearing it they are unlikely to let's just let's just be honest I, yeah i think after after half uh, entering the third year of the pandemic i think the indian citizens likewise the global citizens should understand the value of a mask hmm. uh, so i'm going to quote two very quick statistics so that i can drive home the point loud and clear to everyone watching this program if most people wear a mask there is a 65% decrease in new infections in most recent studies and 98% decrease in person to person transmission if both people even at close distance wear a mask and the lar largest study across six continents has shown 19% per week decrease in the r not factor as far as the lethality of transmission of omicron is concerned mm. omicron concentrated study mask saves life it will stop person to person transmission it will decrease community spread it will make the virus lose steam it is the only barrier to prevent infection i must add that the omicron is distinctly almost 69 to 70% less lethal as compared to delta but still the long covid effects and even the mild infections give lingering uh, symptoms even 3 months to 6 months later i think that can be avoided especially the vulnerables who are more predisposed to cardiac events neurological and pulmonary events yes. can be prevented it's a simple cost effective just wear your mask right you know the fatigue has set in undoubtedly but uh, i guess we have to come back to that situation where we wear mask more often than not especially in indoor spaces thank you so much to all of you Thank for you. joining us on God the lead debate this evening